All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Why don't we uh, open with a word of prayer this morning? Father God, we, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to come here today as, as believers, followers of you. Thank you for giving us the chance to sing your praises, sing out to you, and, and hear word from, from one of your awesome men of God. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Why don't you stand with us if you can, and if you'd like to, and uh, we'll sing a few songs this morning. One, two, three, four. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with us. God, you are freedom, 
You're alive now within us. You saw us here before you conquered the grave and delivered on the promise. So we will run all together with hearts of flame, with a fire that can't be tamed. Our God, all glory to your name. We will run. Our surrender to bring you praise. Our desire that you be praised. Our God, all glory to your name.
my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. Is that one more time? Amazing love. circumstances, and all our blessings, and all our doubt, Lord, we just honor you. Amen.
give God another hand offering this morning. Before, uh, before you're seated this morning, if you'd like to, take a few minutes and uh, be a good opportunity to drop your offering into one of the offering boxes in the back and say hello to each other in the sanctuary. Half the room comes down front during this time. Okay, come on down, you guys. Hey, um, Stanley, some of you know Stanley is our box we use in this service. It's a toolbox from Stanley, so it's got his name right on the front. So we call him Stanley. He went home last week with somebody, and then that somebody called or texted me last night from New Jersey and said, we're so sorry, but Stanley won't be there tomorrow morning. So the box didn't come, so I brought my basket. Remember the first week we did this, I brought my basket. So I wanted to work with you with my basket if I could. I'm going to reach inside and find something. Let's see what I can find. Does anybody know what this is? What's that? You're raising your hand before you even saw the front. You were figuring that out. What do you think it is? Yep, this is the teepee. Okay, let's set this up here. A teepee. Let's see, what would go with a teepee? Maybe. Anybody guess? Just say it out loud. Yeah, Native American and Indian, isn't it? So we'll put one of those up. In fact, I think I have, I have another one. Look at here. Got another one. We'll put this one up here. And let's see. Oh, I got another one. Let's see if I have any more in here. I've got to see what's all in my basket. Oh, yep, 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 yep. One more. Okay, now I have something else in here. What do you think this is? What is it? Um, it's a boulder. It's a boulder. It's called the Plymouth boulder. Wait, not quite. What's it called? Plymouth rock. And it has a date on it. What do you suppose that date is? That's right, 1620. Let's see, what's this year? What year is it? Yeah, 2014. This rock has a date on it from 1620. And we'll figure this out, but that is not the date that the rock was made, okay? We'll put that here. Somebody figured out probably where this is going to be able to figure out the date. Okay, now, there were hundreds of years ago, in 1620, that's a long time ago, there were some Native Americans, and they were in this land that we're in now, on this continent. And some people from across the ocean came on a, on a boat. And they, it's called a ship, right? And so the, oh, you are so sharp. You already know the name of the ship. It's called the Mayflower. That's kind of like Jerry knowing that this says 1620 on it, right? So they came over on the Mayflower, and they found their way to this land. The first year they were here, it was a very difficult year. And somebody, let me, in fact, these are some of the people that came on that boat. Some of these people, and they had a very difficult year but somebody helped them to grow things and they became their friends. And what, what did they help them grow? Can you remember anything like that? What? Corn. Corn. And what else did they help them grow? Anything else? Beans. Probably beans. Yeah, that makes sense. And what did they help them um, maybe shoot? 
Did they help them with hunting as well? And what did they get? I'm thinking they got a turkey. I'm looking forward to that. And they all got together in the fall, and they celebrated. Now, it was a difficult time. But even in the midst of all the difficulties and how hard life was way, way back then, they knew they had a lot for which to give thanks. And so today, these days, it'll actually be next Thursday, we have a holiday. What holiday is next Thursday? Does anybody know what it is? What holiday is next Thursday? Is it Christmas? Oh, Thanksgiving. All right. Exactly. So every year we set aside a time, and not just as Christians, but we set it aside as a country to remember, to give thanks. And if we could only keep in mind these guys that came to this new world and they made some new friends and they worked together and how important that is when we're working together, it's better. And that life, even though it's challenging, always has things within it for us to give thanks. So that's what we're going to talk about today a little bit as we head towards Thanksgiving. How many of you are going to have a big Thanksgiving dinner? Anybody? A few of you? Maybe all of you, even though you're not raising your hand. How many of you guys are going to have a big Thanksgiving? Yeah, see, there's going to be some big Thanksgiving gatherings. So we're going to look forward to that. Let's have a prayer together today. Lord, we are thankful. And uh, we gather together with our families and our friends. And, and Lord, help this be a time when we truly remember to give thanks. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up. Um, I can't send... I can't send Stanley home with you, anybody, today because Stanley is in New Jersey on vacation. So it'll come back next week, and we will have Stanley, and then I'll send him back out with one of you guys, okay? All right. Thanks for coming down. It's hard to know how to leave without Stanley, isn't it? But we're going to do it. I love it. I'll tell you what, kids in a church are just fantastic. Today I want to spend some time just reminding us of a couple of announcements. Um, the Pony Express bags are circulating around the congregation. If, it, if you are new to us and would like to have it, just see me after the service or just look forward to it next year. It's an opportunity for us to make kind of a pledge, uh, an estimate of giving for the coming year. This comes to our house. We Take the pledge cards out, fill it out, put it in the other side, drop a postcard in the mail that's in here, and that tells us back at the church where it's at at any given time. And it goes to about 12 different families, and there's 13 of these through our parish that are going around. So we're having fun with that, getting to know our neighbors. Um, we, um, we'll try to wrap it up in the next week. We try to keep it at a house for about 24 hours, but I know that's hard. If any of you are on the cycle and it's stuck at your house and you can't find the next person, just give me a call. Call us here at the church um, or bring it by to the church and we'll get it delivered to another person so we can go from there. Um, children's Christmas program is coming up. Some of you have kids in it and we're really looking forward to it. That's going to be, I think, the 14th. Does that sound right? 14th of next month. And uh, we're going to have it in both services so we get to see it twice if we want or come to the one that works best at 9 or 11. So <coughs> I'm looking forward to that. Next Sunday at what time is Hanging of the Greens? Does anybody know? 5, five o'clock, Hanging of the Greens. Here, if you've never been a part of that with this church, it's lots of fun. It's a very casual time. We gather together. And this room is really decorated up nice by the time we're finished with our trees and our greens and stuff. So uh, come and join us with that project. Anything more that I need to remember? That, any other announcements that we need to hold up? Just one, and that would be the U version. I'd remind you of this. Remember, you can download it from the Internet, U version. And once you download it, you can then get the bulletin for the services here. If you've got a smartphone, I'm opening you version right now. Once you open it, then you can go to live events, and you'll find the lighthouse on there, and it gives you the scripture and some of the other announcements and things that you might like. 
It also gives you, all, version is free, it gives you a whole lot of different ways, to, uh, different versions of the Bible, I mean literally hundreds of versions, so you'll find one that works for you to read your scripture each day, and it has a lot of functions that we're just beginning to integrate into what we're doing here, so we'll look forward to drawing your attention to version again, so um, we'll set that aside for now. Anything else? Well, let's take a look. Let's take some time for prayer to begin with. Um, what are the prayers that we bring with us today? Are there people or situations we're holding up? Yes. Ben's going in for some tests tomorrow, so we're hoping those are good to go. All right. We've got to hold Ben in our prayers. I think Ben's in the back. All right, Ben, we're thinking of you. You're in our prayers. Any other prayers that we hold up this week? We want to hold uh, all the travelers up. We have a family in our church. The Heising family had a car that got in an accident this week, and everybody's fine. The car was destroyed, I understand. But, you know, that's kind of, it's, it's a hardship when we lose stuff. But it is a blessing when the people in our families and our friends are okay in the midst of tragic times like that. So as so much traveling is going on this coming week, let's keep everybody in our thoughts and prayers. Who else do we remember this week? Anything else going on that we want to hold up? Yeah. Uh, Stacy and I have some good friends, um, and uh, the, the wife, they live here in town. Um, her father, uh, they just found out a few weeks ago, has uh, brain cancer, and it was inoperable. Uh, they're hopeful that, uh, that they're going to do a somewhat experimental um, chemo. Wow, there's a lot going on in that family. Let's keep this family in our prayers in the days ahead as they face these challenges. This is, you know, it's, it's, life has so many challenges, so many tough places, but I'm sure their support for each other right now is vital, as it is for all of us. Um, some of you know Jake Hearns. Uh, Jake uh, is from this church. Jake is off and about now. He's, uh, he's been uh, a luge person for a number of years. Since he was just a kid, he's lived away from home training at the Olympic facilities and just missed being an Olympian this time by literally hundredths of a second in the last Winter Olympics. He was the fourth, and they needed three. Um, Jake, this, this last two weeks ago now, was in a, a, a luge accident and hit his head um, and got a concussion. And he's coming along pretty good. Some of you also know that Jake is also, he joined the military um, this last spring, summerish thing and went through basic. And he'll be one of our um, military Olympians or military athletes in the, in the years ahead. Um, it's a special group of military folks that, that continue with their Olympic sport training, but also try to um, help to communicate with young people, particularly um, about the military and about the positive nature of, of being a part of supporting our country in that way. And so they go around and um, they still go through maneuvers and stuff like that. They still have responsibilities to, that are more challenging responsibilities in the military. But Jake is such a great kid. I mean, he is going to really inspire young people by his athleticism. Um, now, Jake's crew, um, he, he's now done with all the basic stuff, and he was supposed to be off in Europe right now with his luge group, and he was unable to go because of this concussion. Um, but it, it was so amazing. He got called um, over the weekend, um, and uh, his, his military group was being called up for some service. And the guy calling everybody said, we've been called, we're going, guys. And he got grumble, 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 grumble. But when he got Jake, Jake says, when shall I be there? And you know, I'll be there as soon as you want me to help out with what this project is. And when, the, when his superior found out he had a concussion, it's going to slow things down. But here's a young man that could easily hold up, I don't want to go because, and he, he didn't want to even tell him he had a concussion. So let's keep Jake in our prayers that as he recovers, and he's doing better, 
that he's able to get back to what you know, all of this is about and keep his training regimen going and things. So keep Jake in your prayers. Who else are we holding up? Anybody else that we remember we want to keep in our prayers? I think there are many things near and far that are going on that are tough. There will be people in our community that will be facing uh, the holidays alone. Let's keep them in our prayers. There will be people in our community that will be hungry when we're feasting. There will be people around the world that will be at war when we are thinking so much of peace around our dinner tables on Thursday and folks that won't have a place to call home, um, not only today and tomorrow, but for months and even years to come. So I, I have to be grateful when I think about all I have, and I suspect many of you join me in that same sentiment. So let's keep those things in mind as we, as we come together in prayer. Let's pray together. Precious Lord, we gather in this place to celebrate our faith and to struggle and wrestle with our faith. To listen and to share and to sing and to pray. Lord, we know that wherever we gather, you're with us. Not only here in this place, but throughout our week. We don't walk our journey alone. And we're thankful for that. Lord, there are so many things in our lives that we give thanks for. And Lord, sometimes they're the strength to deal with the tough things in life, not just the sweet things. Sometimes, Lord, we give you thanks for even the challenges that that give us strength to face even greater challenges down the road. Help us, Lord, as individuals, and help us to be the best we can be for our families, and help us, Lord, to be the best we can be for our community and for this church. And Lord, we pray not only for this church, but for the other churches nearby and far away, that together we will be a great concert that you conduct and that you lead us to sharing your gospel with the world. Help us in that. We pray all of this in your holy name. Amen. Our scripture for this morning is really short, and if you go on version, you'll find it there. But... I'll share it with you. It comes from uh, a letter that um, Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, the second letter, in fact. Um, And it comes from uh, chapter 1, verse 16, 17, and 18. So three verses, but it's almost like one verse. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Rejoice always. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. One morning, after a terrible snowstorm, you know what those are like? You kind of learned this recently, didn't we? Um, Susan was outside shoveling her driveway, it's a big driveway, and she She stopped to wave to uh, a neighbor, and the neighbor rolled down the car window as he was pulling out. And he says, how come your husband's not out here helping you shovel this driveway? And she explained that one of them had to stay inside and take care of the kids. And so she said, we drew straws to see who would do the shoveling. He said, sorry about your bad luck. She said, no, I won. (laughs) So giving thanks in our circumstances sometimes remind us of the struggles of somebody else and our lives in comparison. Because we, we do know this, don't we, that people, we don't, sometimes we feel that we're the one that's put upon by life's challenges, but we realize that there are people in this world that their challenges are so immense compared to our own that it can put things within context, and that's a helpful thing. Dr. Dale Robbins writes, I I used to think people complained because they had a lot of problems. But I have come to realize that they have problems oftentimes because they complain. Complaining just doesn't seem to change things or make the situation better. Oftentimes it amplifies frustration, spreads discontent and discord, and can invoke an, an invitation for the devil to cause havoc in our lives. I think that's so true, isn't it? 
there's so much for us to complain about and for us to bring a negative kind of sense to our lives and to the lives of everybody around us. This next week's going to be a busy time for many families and many individuals doing things, traveling, all the things that come along with a holiday shift. We think maybe no school for a few days, it ought to lighten the thing, but it almost sometimes makes it more challenges. Worse, Mom says, uh-oh. But it's, it's true, there are challenges about the changes that come at holiday times. AAA tells us this year we can expect about 46 million people to hit the American roads and travel at least 50 miles. And really the average travel is, is several hundred if you figure it per person in this country. This is about a, a little over a 4% increase over a year ago, the number of people that were expected to hit the highways. I, I'm kind of expecting it has something to do with the price of gas. You know, it'll be easier for people to get places. As it comes to air travel for Thanksgiving this year, we're expecting to see about 3.5 million people take to the skies to get from point A to point B. And that won't be cheaper this year. It's going to be a little bit more, they tell us. Travel can be difficult. But I suppose it's uh, something, while we could consider complaining about it, as it's said usually at Thanksgiving, nobody has it as bad as the turkey, okay? And just to mention turkeys, somewhere in the range of 300 and, or 235 million turkeys have been raised in America for this season that we're in right now. When I think about how many people there are, I'm thinking, wow, that's not too many people per turkey, so I hope somebody's eaten a little more than I am. Thanksgiving has its challenges, and it's for more than just the turkey. There's the shopping craze. It's kind of ramped up over the last several years. This Black Friday thing has gotten bigger and bigger, and every year you hear of more concerns. And, of course, there are people that maybe wouldn't want to work if they didn't have to, but in the job that they have, they have to work. It's kind of not just with the Black Friday thing, but I think it's with a lot of our holidays. And, and with this one, I think about this, that you wonder about Thanksgiving and whether we can too easily forget what it's about. You know, some people even, even change the name to Turkey Day because maybe that's more consistent because I wonder how often we're taking time to really, truly give thanks. Someone has said that there are basically two kinds of people in the world. When people say this, I wonder, but sometimes it's instructive. They say there are those kind of people that who have a sense of gratitude, and there are some people who have a sense of entitlement. You kind of know what I'm saying? Think about it for a few moments. A sense of gratitude versus a sense of entitlement. For those who live out of a sense of gratitude, you know, nothing is taken for granted. Everything can be perceived in a sense as a gift. For those who live out of a sense of entitlement, Everything is taken for granted. Nothing is truly appreciated since we feel that we're entitled to everything we have and more in our affluent land, the land in which we live. Feelings of entitlement, I think, can very easily outnumber feelings of gratitude. And when I talk about entitlement, often in our political world, people talk about the entitlement of entitlement programs. People at the, at the kind of bottom part of our socioeconomic structure. But I'm here to tell you that this idea of entitlement is every bit as alive at every level of our strata. And there's a special kind of sense of entitlement that can form even at the very top. Some of you are country music fans. I, I don't know. I, I, I know a few country singers and, that I've heard of over the years, but I don't know a whole lot about him. But this name I know. His name is Jimmy Dean. And I knew him because I ate his sausage more than I sang his songs. But, but uh, yeah, same guy, Jimmy Dean. He was a singer and a sausage guy. I don't know how you bring those two together. He co-wrote a song that I think kind of touches into this idea of thankfulness. Believe it or not. And he, it's called Drinking from My Saucer. And here, here's one of the lines from it. I kind of like this. This makes sense. So Lord, help me not to gripe about the tough rose I have hoed. I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup has overflowed. 
<laughs> well, the grammar is a little bit weird, but the sentiments, I think, are right on. I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup has overflowed. You know, so many of us live lives that the reason that we spill a little bit is because we got so much. And it'd be good for us to recognize that even some of the spills that are, you know, not the greatest things are happening because of our abundance. And that's something for us to know and to claim and to recognize. That's a feeling of gratitude. Thank you, Lord. My life's been tough, but the, the good times, they outnumber the bad. And I'm grateful. The person with a sense of gratitude understands that they're not the center of the universe. When something good happens to them, it's a gift to be treasured and for which to be profoundly grateful. The young man was feeling really proud of himself. As a brand new college graduate, and Matt, I know you're just a few months away, he'd taken his CPA exam and, and he passed with flying colors and this and this guy, he was a full-fledged accountant now. So he goes home. And his father had, was an immigrant to this country. And uh, now he owned his own little business. Well, his, his son, filled with all his smarts and understanding, he began to criticize his dad and his dad's way of bookkeeping and keeping track of his business. He said, Dad, you don't even know how much you're making. Over here in this drawer, you got the accounts receivable, and, and over here you've got you know, the receipts, and over here in the cash register, that's where you keep all the money. And you don't ever balance it out and figure it all out. His father listened, and then he paused and looked at his son. He said, son, when I came to this country, the only thing I owned was a pair of pants. Now your brother is a doctor. Your sister, she's a teacher, and, well, you're an accountant. Your mother and I own a home, and we have a car, and, and, and we have this little business. Now, the way I figure it, if I add all that up and I subtract the pants, all the rest is profit. I'm a fortunate man. Add it all up. I wonder if that's something that would help us during, maybe particularly during a time of Thanksgiving. Add it all up. We come into this world with nothing, really. Think about it, nothing. Everything we have is profit. We can never give too much thanks to God for the great, things about life. The person with this understanding of life is, I think, grateful for their health and for their family, for their faith, and for, you know, the people they meet each day. Life is a gift, and they're so, so thankful for it. But on the other hand, <laughs> there are some people who look at life like this. Everything ought to go my way. I'm entitled to be smart. I'm entitled to be attractive. I'm entitled to be wealthy. I'm entitled for all the lights to be green all the way to work. I'm entitled to the maximum paycheck possible for someone as wonderful as I am. I'm entitled to get my own way at work, at home, in all my relationships. I am entitled. And I think this, there are people that kind of lean towards that kind of an expression of life. So when they hit a bump in the road, when life gets hard and circumstances turn against us, when we're in that, we, we can easily sulk and pout and make ourselves and everyone around us miserable because we have a sense of entitlement. Now, the question is, which, which attitude characterizes us? Entitlement or Gratitude. Perhaps you remember the story that um, I've shared before. A year ago today I shared it. It's about Jesus coming to contact with ten people that have, ten guys that have leprosy. And, and he heals them and sends them off. They don't know they're healed until they're on their way to the priest because it would require a priest to, 
to determine that someone was healed of a disease. So they're on their way, these ten guys, and they're healed. And one of them, only one of them, comes back to tell Jesus, thank you. Perhaps maybe one in ten is an accurate reflection of the percentage of people who truly live out of a sense of gratitude. Maybe. The rest of us are likely somewhere along the scale. A missionary tells of leading a, a, a worship service in a leper colony way away from everything else. And he opened up the service with a song, uh, with song requests. What do you guys want to sing? A horribly disfigured woman requested the song, Count Your Many Blessings. As the worshipers sang enthusiastically, the missionary found that he just couldn't even open his mouth. He was just so taken aback. A friend who heard of his story remarked, I suppose you'll never be able to sing that song again. The missionary said, no, I'll sing it, but I'll never sing it the same way again. A sense of gratitude or a sense of entitlement Maybe the figure 1 in 10 is a little high. Maybe some of us who think we're living out of a sense of gratitude might want to rethink our answer. Pastor Doug Ordenberg tells of reading excerpts from a diary of a young husband whose wife was gravely ill. Doctors couldn't assure him that she would survive the night. In the diary, the young man expressed his his profound faith in God and God's plan for his life. This is what he wrote in that diary that night while sitting by the bed of his wife. She may die before morning, but I have been with her for four years. There is no way that I could feel cheated if I did not have her for another. I never deserved her for a single moment. God knows that. Well, what did I deserve? What did I do to deserve birth? It was purely a gift, and I am me, and that's a miracle. I have no right to a single moment, yet I have had 32 years. But wait, I'm being given another day, another day to live and read and smell and walk in glory. I'm alive for another day, and and she is still alive. It's a gift, another gift. Thanks be to God. I wonder if I could have written words like that. Words of gratitude in a diary. Under similar circumstances, I wonder what I could do. Or would I be gritting my teeth and, and cursing God for what I was being served up in that moment? It's a tough question if we're honest with ourselves, I think. Or maybe a question like, when are we most thankful to God? When do we truly praise God? When the stock market is up, when we're on a team with a winning streak, when our family is safe at home. Pastor Jeff Huber once knew a man named Gary who came to faith late in his life. Gary's teenage daughter was the first member of the family to attend church, and she convinced the rest of the family to join her. Not long after Gary discovered this new and wonderful reality for himself, And God, he was diagnosed, Gary was, with cancer. The cancer struck quick and hard and furious. In the short time that Gary had left, he spent a lot of time reading the scriptures, every story, every lesson, just trying to, and it was all fresh to him and new and exciting. In the last few days of Gary's life, the pastor brought Holy Communion to Gary and his family. And the pastor remembers how joyfully Gary received the communion that day. 
couldn't stop talking about how thankful he was, which in our tradition and in many traditions, communion is called the great thanksgiving, which is really cool. Couldn't stop talking about how thankful he was. This is what the pastor wrote, or what Gary wrote. I began to see all the things God had done for me and how God had carried me through this time. When I began to praise and thank God, it was then that I found joy. I don't know about you, but, but I find such genuine expressions of gratitude in the face of unbelievable heartache almost overwhelming. And I began to realize my own sense of entitlement. I would like to put myself with that one leper that comes back and says, thank you, but I'll tell you what, I think that it's very easy to be drawn in the other direction in life. Here's what we need to see. The happiest people on the planet, the happiest people on the planet, are those who live with a sense of gratitude, thankfulness. They live with it. They don't wait for Thanksgiving to roll around. Giving thanks isn't simply a duty. It is a key to joy and happiness. Author Sarah Van, Van, Van Trankic, uh, whose best-selling book is called Simply Abundance, praises the virtue of a grateful attitude. She said that she was always angry and envious of other people. She was a workaholic. She was a perfectionist who compared herself to others constantly. And she said something in life was missing. Finally, Sarah got sick and tired of being sick and tired. So she began focusing on not what was wrong in her life, but what was right in her life. She sat down and she recorded everything for which she was grateful, all the thankful things. 150 things hit her list. It changed her outlook. That day, she began the habit of keeping a gratitude journal. She never ends a day now without adding at least five new things to this journal, things for which she's thankful. I, I would think the least we could do is mention them in our minds during our prayers. Daily, five things that we're grateful for. It changed her life. It could change ours. I wonder if this makes sense to any of you. Most of us have an upside-down view, I think, of life. We, we think to ourselves, if something really terrific happens to me, then I'll be grateful. But I think such gratitude is, is kind of like a fleeting emotion. And it's a, it's a roller coaster. If everything is tied to all the outward circumstances that are going on in our life and in the world, it's going to be a rough ride. Instead, we've got to tie it to something more than outward circumstances. It's, the question is, how do we do that? I think we do it by centering our life in the grace of Jesus Christ and something that's bigger than just circumstances. Remember Jesus fed the 5,000? Jesus, on one occasion, 5,000 people were gathered there. And it's an amazing story, but somehow 5,000 people had all the food that they could want. And after it was over, Jesus withdrew from them. He spoke with them, and then he left. And he crossed the lake. Well, the people followed him around. After all, he was the guy that could feed them, and they liked that. People want more when you feed them once. It's like the cat, you know, if you feed the wandering cat when it comes to your house, you've got a friend for life. They'll be back the next day, and perhaps they're going to be moving in after that. The people, we're not any different than that, and, and the people in Jesus' time were like that. They followed him around the end of the lake, met him on the other side. But that wasn't what Jesus was after, just feeding them. He wanted them to seek spiritual bread not physical bread. Don't work for food that spoils, he said, but for the food that endures to eternal life. They ask him, what miraculous sign will you give us that we may believe it? What will you do? Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert as it was written. Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. 
That's what they told Jesus. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. It's not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And so when Jesus said this to them, they said, Sir, from now on give us this bread. And Jesus said, I am and the bread of life. The one who comes to me will never go hungry, and this one who believes in me will never be thirsty. The ultimate Thanksgiving feast is to partake of the bread of life, not physical bread, but the bread of life. Each and every day, not one day a year, We who were not entitled to anything were given everything in our Savior Jesus Christ. The greatest gift of all, the gift of love, the gift of grace. In Jesus we receive the bread of life. When we center our lives on this gift of love, we drop all our feelings of entitlement and we see real life. We see everything as it really is. A true gift. Thanksgiving. Amen. Let's pray. Precious Lord, you bless us every every moment of our lives. As we breathe every breath, it's a gift. As we eat even the simplest of meals, it's a gift. Lord, we thank you for this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, uh, before we finish out this morning, um, one more thing with the, the U version app that, that I thought I'd mention to you. They have uh, daily reading plans on there. So Pastor Phil talked about you know, the cup overflowing into the saucer. And, and that happens with faith, too, filling ourselves up with, with faith and and knowledge in Christ. And uh, one, one thing I'd like to encourage you, if you don't do, um, if you download that version app, uh, one of the really great daily readings is read through the New Testament in one year. It works out to about one chapter a day. It's not overwhelming. It's something tangible, something that, uh, that, that you can do. And uh, so as we get closer to the new year and you start thinking about New Year's resolutions, maybe start taking a look at that uh, really great resource that, uh, that you can uh, take, a part, take a look at. Why don't you stand with us this afternoon? Finish out service. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to. The wonders of your mighty love My comfort, my shelter Power of refuge and strength Let every breath, all that I am Never cease to worship Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hand. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compared to the promise I have in you. 